Hey everybody, it's Matt Johnson here. We're back with another episode of Real Estate Uncensored. Thank you so much for joining us. This is where you get to actionable uh, insight and ideas and inspiration to turn your real estate career into a life of freedom. And we're excited to be joined by a special guest. So we're going to talk with her about how she's built her business, especially on the prospecting and uh, and building genuine connections with people. So we've got a lot to share on that. We'll take a question from the Facebook group. But as always, I'm joined in the co-pilot seat by the junior grandmaster himself, Greg McDaniel. Greg, what's up today? Matt, what's up? Be pimping. Man, I'm so glad to be back in California weather. Oh, my goodness gracious. Everything is bigger in Texas, uh, including my brother's house, which is a fucking mansion down there. And uh, I cannot believe how big of a house that boy has. I, I, I walk into it, I'm like, holy shit, man. What do, what do you do? That what, what drugs are you selling on the side? You know, because it's, it was beautiful. But all, all jo joking aside, I, I was going to say, I mean, you, you are coming from the Bay Area, Greg. Like, the houses are slightly larger. Like, they're yeah, a little they bit, are. you know? Yeah. Other parts of the country have larger houses for the same amount of money. Or less money? I've heard this rumor, or but less I saw money. it in action. Right. I was actually blown, I was literally blown away what you could buy for four, five, six, seven hundred thousand. I'm like, that's like a two and a half million dollar home where I come from, man. That's unbelievable. But, it, you know, I had a great time down there. Got some awesome time with my brother. Uh, got to hang with him. Got to, got our other brother, Casey, that came down with us. If anyone said the videos down there, just good, good, solid family bonding time. Um, and I really, that kind of, this next comment, I was out grabbing some lunch today right after you and I got off our strategy call where you were getting frustrated at me and you're like, I'm getting frungry. You know, <laughs> it was hangry. Thank you very hangry. much. Hangry. You're hangry. I'm like, all right, go eat, hang angry guy. <laughs> um, and so I saw, I met, well, Brian, he was on our show. Um, oh, Brian Gilman, yeah. Mm -hmm. Ran into him out, out in the parking lot, and he and I were bantering back ideas about taking over the world as always. The same shit you and I do all the time. But something that I really struck me today, and I, Brian, if you're watching this man, massive, massive kudos to you. The, there was a gentleman that was, uh, you could tell he, he was in a wheelchair and he was looking at us, and I thought he was just like looking past us. But then he said, excuse me, gentlemen, could you could you help me get a push up in, up into my car? And Brian and I looked at each other and we just jumped into action and just went right over to the guy and just pushed him right up and because he couldn't do it himself and, and his electric cart broke. So the what what Brian did at that moment, he made someone's life better and it really touched me on how fast people will react and how it can tremendously affect someone's life just by doing a small, small gesture. So I challenge each and every one of you to go out and change someone's life for the better and quit being a selfish prick. Don't even think about yourself all the time. All right? I had to throw it in, Matt. <laughs> okay. It was like sun, sunshine, right. sunshine and rainbows, and all of a sudden, I'm like, Greg, yeah. quit being a selfish prick. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag, don't be a selfish prick. That's right. All right. No, but it was awesome. All right. Well, with that, let's uh, let's bring in our special guest, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I don't know any better way to segue that. Oh, Greg, you kill me. Okay. Susan. Susan Heller from Naples, Florida. Susan, welcome today. Thank you so much for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it, guys. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun today. So, uh, so for everybody that doesn't know, or anybody that doesn't know who you are, because you've uh, obviously been in business for a long time, there's gonna be people viewing the show that know exactly who you are. But for those that don't, kind of give us the 60 second bio on who you are and how long you've been in business and what your business looks like right now. Sure, I'm a real estate broker down here in sunny Southwest Florida. I serve Naples, Bonito Springs, and Estero. I've been in the business since 1989, and I have a team that works with me, so we can provide outstanding customer service. Excellent. And I'm blessed to have been able to coach with Mike Ferry and his organization, so I've learned a lot with them. Yeah. Is there uh, anything you specialize in, or just a certain type of client or type of property that you really enjoy uh, selling? Uh, I primarily service listings, mm -hmm. and I specialize in marketing, being creative, and being proactive. Oh, you mm. and I, we're going to have some fun on this, on this, on this podcast. <laughs> yeah, we'll dive into that. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, so we'll talk, about, uh, we'll talk about the prospecting angle. We'll talk about uh, what marketing is working for you, what, some of the uh, skill sets that you've built over the years and what's kind of contributed to your success. So we've got a lot, uh, a lot of questions to ask and a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff to cover. But uh, before we get to that, what do you say we take a question or two and kind of get the, uh, the juices flowing? There was one that caught my eye here. Uh, that was actually just posted here within the hour on the Lead Gen Scripts and Objections Facebook page. And if you're not mm -hmm. a member of that already, uh, it's not me and Greg's group. It's just a group that started by a friend of ours, Aaron Wittenstein. Uh, so check that out. It's on Facebook uh, slash group slash got objections. So uh, Giangelo Bautista asks, I uh, was wondering what your best objection, objection handler is for 
the phrase, why don't you just give me your business card and I will give you a call. Uh, he's getting that objection at open houses from prospective buyers. So Greg, let's first uh, go to you. How would you handle that? First, we do want to figure out, you know, what their what their drive is, their motivation for actually buying. Are they looking around? Do, are they talking out of their ass? You know, are they, you know, big hat no cattle? You know, the guy or gal walks in like, I can afford a million and a half dollars. He goes out and he's driving an '82 Honda that has rust bumpers. You know, sometimes people just feel like they want to be important. You got to be careful that you're not being led around by your nose. You know, when someone you know says, I can do this, I can do that. Because a true buyer, a true seller, they will take your information. You can get, they'll give you their real information. When was the last time that you really wanted to go buy a car or go buy a handbag or buy something, and you were intent on buying it, that you didn't go there and do everything you could to make to get the right purchase, the right information, or the right timing, or the right deal, and negotiate the right terms and everything else. So if someone says, "Oh, well, you know what? I'll just take my information. I'll just take your business card, uh, and I'll call you when I'm ready." They're full of shit. They're never gonna freaking call you. Okay. But a way to get around it potentially, Matt. I would suggest this. I would use the storyapp.me technology and say, you know what, I think it's a phenomenal idea. I know that a lot of the times um, our clients sometimes, or my past clients have lost my card and I've, they've, I had to give it to them again. So why don't I do this? Why don't I give you two of my business cards, one for you to keep, one for you to lose. <laughs> you know the cheese dick smile, giggle. Um, and then you then do, you know what, I can also do this for you, sir. Um, what, what's your best cell phone number? And you, have your, you, know, you have your phone out and you're like, okay, what is it? And then they give you the cell phone. You send them your storyapp.me URL. So mine's gregmcdaniel.com. Um, once they get that, then they punch it. It uploads into their system. Now you have their their real cell phone number. You They have your real information, so you can then follow up with them as you see fit. But the number one most important thing is first understanding and getting into their minds and really un knowing why they're doing something. And if they're full of crap, guys, don't waste your time. Don't be a, don't be a dog chasing and chasing your own tail. You're never going to catch the damn thing, and when you bite it, it's going to hurt, right? Because <laughs> you know <laughs> you're in rare form today, man. All Do right. you know why? Do you know why, What's Matt? Why? Why are you in rare form, dude? I'm telling you, man, this stuff is like brain juice, organic carrot juice from Trader Joe's. This shit is like magic potion for the brain. It just turns you on and lets you go. All Woo! right, now I'm gonna have to. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna have to call up a Trader Joe's that's across the street from me and make sure I buy out the entire month's supply. We can't. We cannot have this. <laughs> Greg is sounding smarter than Matt. No. No. Right. I didn't get the memo. I would have stopped on my way in. <laughs> I know. I know. I need to get some. Get some of that. All right. So Susan, let's go back to you. So let's go back to the the original question before before uh, Greg kind of took us off on a tangent on on different ways to give out contact info. So the original objection handler is, why don't you just give me your business card and I'll give you a call. So how would if you were doing an open house, how would you handle that and and what what, are, what would your approach be? I'm very happy to give business cards. Sure. Here's my card. I'll be happy to help. Let me ask you. Are you looking to buy? Is this a shopping trip or a buying trip? Ooh. Do you have a home to sell in the area? I would always resort back to asking questions, becoming conversational, and offering help. Uh, and of course, I'm going to ask for their phone number. As Greg pointed out, I want to know if I've really got a buyer or if I've got a nosy neighbor. Yeah. It could be someone who's thinking about selling and they want to check out the neighbor's house. I need to know that. Is this a buyer? Is it a listing? Is it a, a tourist? So mm -hmm. I want to ask a lot of questions and find out what do we have on our hands and how can I help. Usually when the conversation is going back and forth, they're becoming much more comfortable and they're much more likely to actually call me if they find that I'm helpful and I'm friendly and I'm knowledgeable. So mm -hmm. if they don't call, uh, you know, I'll reach out to them again, but I want to know what's going on. So I'll ask a lot of questions. You know, Susan, one of the things that I do for pre-qualification when they come to open houses like that, uh, Matt and I have talked about this a lot, but I love this script. It just popped in my head one day because I was tired of getting, you know, led around by, like I said, by my nose, by buyers that weren't real or by people that were working with agents, right? I asked them, how did you hear about us? Was it through your, was it through the open, the open house signs, the internet, or did your, or did your agent send you? You know, we can, like you mentioned, a lot of different qualification issues. You know, are they nosy neighbors? Are they tour tourists? Danville doesn't get a lot of tourists, so I don't think I've ever asked that. Um, but I I think that uh, just having people like you do ask a ton of questions and really dive deep, like you said, go go as deep as you can on them, understand the root cause. Um, and then you don't have to waste a lot of time, and you just get right to the point. And you may maybe even make a friend. 
And I was getting to my point, Matt. Thank you very much. You cut me off. (laughs) Okay. Well, let me ask you guys both a question. I don't don't care who answers, but just from a marketing perspective, do either of you or have you tried or have you experimented with uh, sign-in sheets or anything that that encourages them to give you their contact information so that that question doesn't come up where you're asking them for contact information and they throw up that objection to begin with? I'm going to let Susan go on this one first. I've always used sign-in sheets, and one of the tricks that I learned early on in the business is I'll sign in the first sheet. It's a friend, so I'll put in the name, address, phone number, email, and I look after each person goes through because inevitably if one person goes through and doesn't sign in, they put in Tom Smith, the next two or three people follow suit and don't leave phone numbers, email addresses. So you've got to stay on top of that to keep the pertinent information coming. The other thing I find is when I start speaking with them, before I ask for the sign-in, they're more likely to give me the information, rather than if you ask them to sign in immediately, they may or may not be comfortable doing it yet. That's a great tip. That's a great tip. In that case, do you move the sign-in sheet somewhere else deeper in the home, like the kitchen or something, so that you're catching them after they've kind of looked around a little bit, or is it still kind of right there in the entrance? It's by the door, but I'm also by the door, and I'm holding a flyer in my hand, and I'm conversing with them. I'm asking questions. Where are you from? How long have you been looking? What brings you to Southwest Florida? And we're kind of getting rapport at that point, and I say, oh, here's a sign-in sheet, or here's a flyer. Would you sign in, please? And it's that law of reciprocity, the give and take. I'm giving you the brochure. Would you please sign in? Typically, they, they are willing to do so at that point. Perfect. So I think okay. I think we share a brain, Susan. I, <laughs> Are you we, implying I don't have my own? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I I think I'm t- I think I've been gleaning off of you for a number of years because I I mean I, I I say the same thing over and over and over. You go out there with a service-minded attitude, not a commission-minded attitude. You want to go out there and bring value because a lot of uh, law of reciprocity is huge to me, and it will come back to you. Um, and and it's it, they will smell it on you. It's gonna be like a perfume or a cologne. They'll if they like what they smell, they're gonna come back for more. But if you come out there desperate and you know crawling on your hands and knees to them, they're gonna run away. So I your your information is amazing. I love your point of view. You guys, you guys should follow her on everything she does. She is a she's going she's killing it down there. That's my old rant. <laughs> okay. Hey Susan, I'm curious. Did you get involved with uh, with Star Power at any point? I did not, no. No, okay. I was going to say, Greg, Greg and his dad have been involved for a lot of years, so I was just curious if maybe run in the same circles by accident. No, no I, I actually had an old assistant that was uh, involved in Star Power, and they're, I know they're a great group. I, unfortunately, have not had much experience with them, but I've been following other uh, magical gurus. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. Okay. So, uh, so what do you say, Greg? We give a couple shout-outs real quick, and then we'll dive deep into uh, into Susan's business and get Let's into the bulk it. of it. Let's do it, man. Let's make it rain. Okay. All right. So first and foremost, uh, I guess I'll go first. Greg is uh, gathering the the people that he wants to shout out real quick. So I just want to thank Viral Marketing real quick. Uh, just thank him for making podcasts and hangouts like these happen. They are phenomenal. Uh, they not only manage Greg's East Bay Real Estate Video Blog, they also manage Susan's actually, which is uh, Susan Heller Blogspot dot com. Uh, and we'll actually start off with a question about her most recent video, which I, I have kind of a funny story to uh, follow up on that with. Uh, but they do a great job with both of those, so check them out at getviral.com. Remember, viral is the Y. Don't forget that. Uh, so anyway, and then um, also we're going to be talking to one of our previous guests, Christian Peters, started um, an app called Home Buzz that you might want to check out. And so uh, they, uh, we might be talking more about that in future episodes, but if you go back, there's a great episode um, here. Uh, what was that? Was that January or was it earlier than that, Greg? Uh, been. It was, no, it was this year. It was 2016. Okay, yeah. So we interviewed Christian Peters, like former number one guy at KW, uh, back during the whole the REO days. But uh, since then, he's been working on an app uh, that could be a transactional platform for real estate down the road. Right now, it's really good at helping you uh, give and receive feedback on showings, and also as a buyer's agent, prove uh, that you know the neighborhood by touring all the homes, leaving reviews and and basically estimates of value for all the homes in that area, so you can prove to buyers that you know what you're talking about when it comes to the area. So it's a really interesting app. Something to check out. It's home. Buzz. So we just want to mention that real quick. So, Greg, who do you have to shout out? 
Well, Matt, I think you forgot one. Uh, I do believe Patreon, what? Excuse me? Oh, Where? that's right. Oh. Patreon.com slash RE podcast. If you want to support the show and support the ladies behind the show that make the show happen, Vic and Caitlin, who do all the editing and promotion and marketing and all the stuff that Greg and I do not have time or the inclination mm -hmm. to do. Uh, so support the show, patreon.com slash RE podcast. And I want to thank uh, everyone who's going out and buying our uh, marketing, our 10 hours of prospecting product. Thank you guys. You guys are starting to order it more and more. So just thank you for that. Uh, shout outs for me, man. I don't. I usually have a laundry list, but uh, since I've been traveling and being hanging with fam, um, I am going to do something a little bit different. I did a Facebook Live uh, today. So you guys, uh, if you're not friends with me on Facebook, become friends with me on Facebook, and then I'm going to be starting to do Facebook Lives every single day, uh, interacting and bringing unique content that's most of the time is not going to be what you're going to see here on the show. But I just want to give a shout out to my boy Chuck. What up, Chuck? Hey, man, he's got a great live um, role-playing Facebook page. So if you guys want to do a live role-playing, I think it's a role-play live, you know, parentheses, real estate, and uh, get onto that. Jamie Greenville, man, you're amazing. Thank you so much for all your kind words on the, on the, uh, on the, on the uh, live uh, video cast today. Veronica Jose out of uh, Long Beach, you guys are awesome. I'm watching you guys just kick ass, take names, wash, rinse, and repeat it again. Uh, Josh Bryan, amazing. Uh, Beth Skinner, you guys are so supportive. You're helping us get the word out. I really, really, truly appreciate it. Um, Stevie uh, from Florida, thanks for logging on and watching us today. You know, Jared Higgins, thanks to for here in the office. You know, guys, please help us get the word out. This is how we grow this thing by by uh, by word of mouth. Um, we would we 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 depend on you. We need you. We love you. We gotta have you. So help help us help you. Help us that's help right. you. And thanks to all that word of mouth, we uh, were recently, I think, hit number 17 on Curator's list of the top real estate podcasts, so that was pretty exciting. It was phenomenal. We have we have 17, 29 followers on on uh, YouTube, guys. You guys are amazing. We've grown by almost 30, no, way over 30 people. What were, we were like six, no, we're about 29 people in, in just a few days, so yeah. it's, it's unbelievable. But you know what they need to do? You know what they need to do, right? They need to take the McDaniel Challenge. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. And how do they do that, Greg? Matt. They're going to dial your number, 402. No. no. So what they're going to do is you're going to dial my phone number. My phone number. Remember, guys, sequentially put into the, into the phone. It's going to ring this. It's a white phone. It's for real. And you guys are going to call me, 925-915-1978-925-915-1978. Call me. Text me, you guys. I am not shitting you. The last day available is April 28th. Uh, we are going into May for bookings uh, for the McDaniel Challenge. We are... Uh, getting published in Inman every week, guys. When we do, these dates blow up. So get off the damn fence. Call me. Book me. Get time with me. We have so much freaking fun on these calls. By the end of this, you know what? You guys are going to have some sort of war path that we're going to put you on together. And real estate's not going to be some wet cardboard bullshit on a rainy day. It's going to be exciting, fun, sexy, and entertaining, just like me and Matt. No, me. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but take the challenge, guys, 925, 915, 1978. And if, you, if you're in the bathtub, if you're out running or in the gym and you can't write it down, don't worry. We'll give you another opportunity to, to, to write it down. Yeah, What's well, also at McDanielChallenge.com. Okay. All right. Yes. You ready to roll, Greg? Yeah, this character. All, all the shout-outs out of your system? I could do more. The character is flowing. No, I'm good. I'm good. All right. <laughs> let's... let's. <laughs> Let's dive into it. All right, Susan. Thank you for your patience with that. Right? <laughs> Quite a laundry list of people to thank today. Goodness. Always thankful, right? That's Always right. thankful. <laughs> All right, so uh, so take me back. You've been in real estate, you said, since 89. So, uh, so kind of take me back to when you were a new agent, and what were some of the maybe one or two really key kind of skill sets that you had to build when you were building your business early on? What were they, and, and how did you go about building those, those skill sets? Uh, I started in Philadelphia, and... Uh, I just had to learn to talk to people and uh, to get in front of as many people as possible. I started doing open houses. I did floor time. Um, and I called people back. I called people day, night, and weekend. I worked around the clock. I had a full-time job. And then I had another full-time job, real estate. Oh, so, wow. uh, But luckily, I loved it. So I didn't mind. It was always fun. still is fun. You know what? You said something strange that most people are probably, you know, heavy breathing and starting to sweat. You actually talk to another human being on a consistent <laughs> basis. Matt, are you okay? I think I see sweat beads coming off your forehead. I'm good. Thanks. <laughs> no, it's, <laughs> sorry. It's a running joke. Susan, Matt, we always joke that Matt's a hermit. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, I enjoy limiting my life to the very small number of people that I really enjoy talking to. How's that? He means three. And more like five. And I'm not on the list. Yeah, you, you fluctuate. <laughs> you're on the bubble. <laughs> <laughs> you're like the, you're like March Madness. Like you know, it's like you get down, and then I have to decide: eh, is is Greg on the bubble, or is he is he in or out of the tournament this week? All right. Anyway, so uh, so skill sets being uh, talking to people. Learning how to follow up with people, so you actually get get in front of them. So, uh, so I'm assuming you like obviously your uh, Mark Mike Ferry coaching client, and that he was a heavy influence on you. Or, uh, sounds like throughout your career. So I would imagine the scripts and kind of learning what to say and how to work that into conversation was probably another big thing you had to develop. Exactly. Uh, prior to Mike, my high school job was prospecting. Oh, really? They didn't call it that. I was a telephone interviewer, and I would call people as a teenager. I was in a room full of Carol Grays. We all had the same name. So we were all <laughs> calling There was a complaint they called back and asked for Carol Gray, and there were about 25 of us. But okay. you know, there was nothing you could say to a 14-year-old that's really going to affect their day. There was, you know, there really weren't uh, any concerns that I had about making phone calls. The worst that happened was they hung up on me, and then I just called the next one and the next one. So, still the same thing I do today. I just make a lot more money. Yeah, <laughs> a lot more money. but you know that, that's so important though. At 14 years old, you already understood that the word "no," that big, huge, scary, ugly, you know, nasty word "no," couldn't hurt you. It wouldn't hurt you because your mindset going into it was like, "I don't give a shit. Whatever." Exactly. You know, you, so you said no. And, I was in a room full of other people that were hearing no as well. Yeah, and you all—I mean, the Carols united. And it was no big deal because you can. Carols <laughs> united. <laughs> <clears throat> oh wow! But it, but that's so incredible because now once you learn that doing a tele, tele being a telephone interview, which I absolutely love that that coined that phrase, um, that once you hear no in real estate, it's like okay, it's no big deal. I'm moving forward. You know what? You just had a bad day. It's, I'm on to the next one. Most people have been told yes their entire life, and so when they get told no, it's like a shock to the system. It's like getting volt jolted with like 450 volts of energy, going, "What? You don't like what? No trophy? I don't. I don't get. I don't get to win." But you get to. You got that so early on, and nobody gets it. And that's why you're just crushing it in this business. That's such an important skill set. If anyone, you know, I'm gonna shut up, man. <laughs> All right, well, Ken, catch us up on what your prospecting day looks like right now as far as the foundation of your business. Uh, sure. And the one thing I just wanted to build on what Greg said was the other key that I got was from Patrick Ferry when he ran the prospecting school was there's something called the reflex no. And it's when yeah. you walk into the store and someone says to you, oh, can I help you? The salesperson says, can I help you? And what's your reflex? No, I'm just looking. We're there for a reason. Mm -hmm. So when we call people, quite often they automatically say no. And it doesn't mean they don't need our services. It doesn't mean they won't hire us. It's just, uh, it's just something we need to get beyond. So that, that was crucial to me as well. How do you get beyond that? And that, that, is, that is probably one of the biggest sticking points for people. So how do, how do you get past it? I just ask another question. Okay, I, just, I, I stay on the script, first of all, but then I ask another question. And I'll respond to what they say. No? Okay. Well, when you do so, where are you going to go next? And, you know, there's another question after that. It's just a series of questions. It's all it is. Is it? I think the question, I think if I get this right, it's like, you know, okay, you're not going to move. That's great. You, if you, you know, if you, when you're, if you do move, where are you going to go? You know, how did you, you, you pick to live here? You know, th that whole series. Right? Isn't that Mike Ferry's? Exactly. Yes, and there are a lot of variations of that, but yeah, that's that's the script that we use, and I I follow it verbatim. So basically, what you're saying is to get to the next level, just continually be in a state of curiosity about the other human beings' life and life plans. Is that right? Exactly. I really wow. want to know. It's it, and it's coming from a place of contribution too. It's it's not a, as you mentioned earlier, Greg. It's not about the commission check. It's about getting to know the person and how can I help you. And they feel it. They hear it. And they don't want to deal with another salesperson, but they do want to sell their house and they want to deal with someone that can help them. How, when you go back and you ask and you follow up with testimonials and people say and you ask them like you know can you give me testimonials I bet you start to see a trend of probably transparency honesty trustworthiness that people see in you is that correct or I mean the, 
based upon what we're talking about. It's the honesty, it's the integrity, it's being able to tell them what it takes to get the home sold, even when, as I put it, we have to have those difficult conversations. In, in the days of a declining market, it was a moving target headed down. So yeah. we had to have those conversations early on, otherwise it would cost the seller more money. It's true. Well, let's let's dig into that a little bit. So when you uh, when you're meeting with a seller, let's say you're actually taking a listing, when you're when you're setting expectations, what does that conversation look like in your market and for your team when you're setting expectations with what they should expect, especially in terms of pricing? So do you have like a set time frame where you tell them that you're going to reevaluate, or is it just something you set them up for based on well, we're going to reevaluate at some point when the market is starting to give us feedback? Well, we, what we do when we meet with them, we go over a market evaluation in depth and we price it. I give them a range and it depends on how quickly they want to sell it. Yeah, some great. people want to hold out for top dollar. I only deal with motivated sellers. Mm -hmm. So in the pre-qualification phase, if they say, well, we don't have to sell it and we're okay if we hold on to it for another year or two, probably not someone that I'm going to meet with at this point. So I know what price they want to list for before I go out. And if it's not realistic, I'm not going. I protect my time. When I'm, when I'm there, uh, I'll go over the market evaluation. I know what it expired, what price it was listed for, and I know what likely stopped it from selling. I know what they feel stopped it from selling. So we discuss all that, and then we go over their motivation. Where are they going? When do they need to be there? What happens if it doesn't sell? Mm -hmm. Are you not taking that new job? Are you not going to be closer to the kids and the grandkids? Uh, you know, we've got a lot of seniors and sometimes they're in a house that's two story and they can't do steps, but they're holding out for a higher price. So, you know, we talk about these things and frankly, this time of the year with the season ending, have they looked at the cost to carry it for another year? If it doesn't sell for a year and it costs you $30,000 to own this home, why not adjust the price $25,000 and sell it today? So these are conversations that we're having on a regular basis. Uh, I do tell them that we will be giving them feedback, the good and the bad. And if the property is on the market and it's not getting showings, that tells us that we're overpriced. If we're getting showings and not offers, that also tells us that we're overpriced. It's just a matter of how much. So we will monitor the feedback on a weekly basis. We'll also look at a market evaluation. What's happened in the community since we've listed it? And we do that. We talk to them every week, myself or my team. So we keep in touch with them. And that's important that they know what the, and I love what you said earlier about the agent that's got the app going where he views properties and gives feedback. That is so crucial to help one another out with honest feedback. You know, the feedback that it's great, it shows beautifully, and it's priced right, well, it's not selling, so there's obviously something else there. But the mm -hmm. honesty that an agent can help to give another agent that will cause it to sell, you know, if there's anything wrong with it, if the price is too high, if the fuchsia bedroom is a turnoff, you know, these type of things that the seller needs to know. The cat box doesn't smell good. <laughs> <laughs> no, it no, it does not. <laughs> that, ha that makes my job easier. Greg and Matt said that this needs to be done. <laughs> <laughs> Need to move the cat poo box, and you might want to change the fuchsia bedroom. Exactly. Yeah, that's right. All right. All right I'll so, uh, yeah. All right. So that that explains that. Um, I'm curious though. Um, I just wanted to dig into one little point before we move on, and uh, I'm assuming obviously you're very listing heavy, and then I believe you have at least one, if not a couple, of buyers agents around you. Is that right? I do. Okay, and so I'm assuming probably your best, your better quality buyer leads are coming off of the yard signs on your current listings. Is that right? Yes. Okay, so what is your what is your yard sign system look look like? Just give us a quick sense of you know kind of what signs are in the yard. Uh, do you have like a 24 hour recorded hotline, or do you have like text, you know, like on your riders and different things like that? Like what's generating those really good quality buyer leads off your yard signs? We're, and that's that's an interesting question. We are in. A, gate, a community where we've got a mix of inventory. We've got high rises on the beach. We've got gated golfing communities that have very strict sign restrictions. Mm, uh, they've got to be a certain size, certain color, certain material. Uh, and some of them, they all go to my cell phone. And then my cell phone uh, goes into the office quite a bit. So what we do is we've got the 800 riders. 
but some of the signs can't have the riders. A lot of them can't have them because of their size and because of the restrictions within the community. Um, so a lot of them are just coming in to me or to my team. Gotcha. And then they're so they're going to the office, and then one of your buyer's agents hopefully is either physically in the office or bounces out to their cell phone from there. Exactly. And everyone on my team is licensed. Uh, I'm very fortunate. I've got people on my team with a lot of experience. I've got a gal that has uh, 26 years real estate experience, and she decided not to sell. So she joined my team wow. as a closing manager and uh, brought her database. So. Wow. That's awesome. That's awesome. I was going to ask you about that. That caught my eye on your website. I was going to ask, what is a close, closing negotiator? So it's basically someone that has decided not to sell. They have all the experience in the world and the whole database. So uh, does she just handle it from what, accepted contract to close? She actually negotiates my contracts quite often. Really? really? She's great, yes. Both of us, wow. Where do you, <laughs> that's where do you well, buy one of those? I want to. <laughs> you know, okay. I, I marketed to all of the other agents in the MLS and quite often you'll have either new agents that haven't succeeded and they need an admin position or you've got agents transitioning out of the business. We get a lot of people relocating from other areas that have been agents in different markets and they yeah. think it's going to be easy to get started and sometimes they can bring their knowledge. Exactly. I see Greg shaking his head. Uh -oh. <laughs> it's, it's true. I thought That's I was going to set the world on fire in the first first month and it actually took me longer than I anticipated as well. So it's, hmm. but it, it, it was a great way to get talent on the team and I'm always looking for great talent. That's awesome. I mean, yeah, that's you, a great, uh, yeah, it, I mean, for anybody that's, uh, especially if you're part of uh, like a nationwide brokerage, it's great to keep in touch with other agents in other areas just for that reason right there. You have people leaving teams all the time, just relocating to other states, uh, and they could be a huge, huge asset to your team if they're moving into your area rather than being your competition. Let them join your team. Exactly, so, and hang your license with our company in a referral mm -hmm. status and have me to go out and take the listings and my buyer agents to work with the buyers. It's a great fit. So Susan, question for you. I mean, I just just popped in my head. I, I, what are your thoughts on us? Love to hear hear it. Um, let's say um, you're another state, another part of Florida, say Miami, non-conflicting area, right? If they're put ads out into you know to the agent network or out on Facebook, hey, if you're a licensed real estate agent, you want to make passive income, you know, then you look and you then sh you know filter out maybe agents that maybe are on maternity leave, uh, maybe they have just decided that they don't want to do it but they want to make side income when they had a good business in the past, uh, whatever it is, but then that you hire them on a referral basis purely to negotiate your contracts for you. If you if you wanted to get more people like that, or if you wanted to get be better talent, so you'd like interview them, put them through a, you know put them through their paces, see if they can handle the negotiations, and then take them on a, as a referral or a flat fee or something like that. They make a few bucks. You don't have to deal with the negotiations. I mean, if you didn't have your gal, maybe another agent might want to do this. Is is that feasible in your opinion? You know, and that's such a great idea. I was actually talking with another gal over the weekend for a listing manager position I have, and she is in the state of Florida, uh, but she acts virtually. So, and hmm. she's done different things for different agents. So, there, I've thought about that opportunity. Uh, the drawback is that we don't have someone here on the ground to meet with our clients, and we do have a lot of seniors, and they're very hands-on. They feel comfortable coming in, having a cup of coffee with us, coming into our office, and you know, it's it's nice to meet them. So, I don't want to take that away. I want the clients to feel comfortable, uh, yet. As we all know, in this day and age of technology, we can be anywhere and still be listing and selling property. Yeah, 100%. You know, that's that's the great thing about technology. It's just allowing us a lot more freedom. Um, you, so how, Susan, how long have you been in the business, if you don't mind me asking? Since 1989. A couple okay. years. Just a few. You know, you're you're new <laughs> in the business. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, a lot of the things that have changed, like back in 89, there, I mean, internet? Uh, nope. Not, no. I mean, not happening. So, I mean, what? Well, it's books. Oh, yeah. Remember the oh, big books? Yes. <laughs> the blue ones? They got <laughs> like delivered by taxi? <laughs> <laughs> That's when the, the big bad Zillow did not, uh, did not control our data. You con controlled your data. But, uh, crap, what was my question? It was going to be a good one, too. But it was something about how you've seen the business change. Damn it. <laughs> Freaking juicy <laughs> burn off, man. Well, let me ask you this, Susan. So we talked about other other markets, right, potentially advertising in other markets. So this is a question because of the unique nature of Florida, right? 
So it seems like Florida has these uh, pipelines from different East Coast and Midwest uh, cities, whether it's Chicago, Cleveland, uh, New York City, Jersey, stuff like that. So do you do you make an effort to to advertise or, or build connections or in some way kind of reinforce your pipeline from those cities so that you get people that are coming into Naples before they're actually like on the ground in your city looking at homes? You know, and that's, that's such a great question. We're always looking for ways to reach more people. Uh, the company that I'm affiliated with is international. We have a lot of clients that are coming from Europe and from Canada as well as throughout the U.S. So I network with other agents uh, through the company I'm with. I don't know if I'm supposed to say that or not, but yeah, we're talking. I'm with Remax. So Remax is international. I, I network with Remax agents and I network with other agents in the Mike Ferry system. I get a lot of referral business that way. And with the the websites that Remax has, we get a lot of leads that way. And yes, uh, especially when it's cold up north, we get a lot of internet leads during a yeah. blizzard. <laughs> <laughs> My email is full. I can't yeah. imagine why. You could just dump five five feet of snow in New York City like, oh, Florida's looking really good right now. It's so true. <laughs> it looks good all the time, man. I, I, I have a funny feeling I'll probably be ending up out in Florida. It just What? What? Yeah. Oh. Well, you don't know everything about me. Don't judge me. All right. Okay. All right. I thought you were going to end up down here in Sandy, beautiful, sunny San Diego with me, but that's all, all right. right. I probably might. I'll split my time. How does that make you feel okay. better? Okay. That sounds good. All right. What part of Florida will you be on our coast, Greg? I have absolutely no idea. I uh, we'll talk off air, but I had this whole vision board thing, and Tom Ferry took us through this whole you know meditation thing, and I saw myself. I can't you can't really describe it, but I know what I'm looking at, and I've been looking for California. Actually. It's going to be either San Diego or it's going to be Florida. I mean, those are the two likely locations for this, but it's just, it's a beautiful state down there. I mean, everything is trying to kill you constantly, you know, when it comes to the animal life, but, you know, besides that, it's beautiful. Luckily, they don't get into the houses often. Often. Oh. That's the part. <laughs> yeah. As long as they can't invade my home. That's good. <laughs> So, uh, so Susan, tell us about uh, what is what does a productive day look like for you? Who are you talking to? Who are you communicating with to generate your listing leads? Well, I have what I call Money Monday, and it's the start of my week. It starts me off powerfully and strong. I prospect Monday from 8 a.m. until 8 p.m. And oh. uh, yes, I get wow. on the and I start with expireds. I start every morning with expireds. Then I go to some lead follow-up. I'm doing some probate calls. Uh, now I take a Mondays with Mike call and a Think Big group call on Mondays. I'll take maybe a two-hour break in the middle of the day. Then I go back on the phone, typically from 4 o'clock till 8 o'clock, and I hit it hard, and then the massage therapist arrives at the house about 8.15. <laughs> <laughs> that is fantastic. Oh, and so needed at the end of that day, too, huh? Wow. Uh, okay. All right, so that's... Uh, so now, that's two hours uh, away from that right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you chose to spend your break with us? I did. I wow. did. Awesome. Thank you. And I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, I look at it and I think it's another form of prospecting, isn't it? And I'm probably that's reaching right. more people now than I will be on the phones for, for a half hour or an hour. I, I hope for your sake that we, that you are in terms of reaching other agents and building referral relationships and so forth because obviously there's a lot of people moving into your area and living in a resort market makes it a lot easier to get value out of something like this where you're building connections with agents around the country. Absolutely. Yeah, it really okay. Does. So that's the, so that's a Monday. That's an insane. That's a crazy day. I've never heard anybody say that. So what is your what do your other days look like? Does that free you up to then spend more time on follow up and more time in listing appointments the rest of the week? It does. The rest of the week is 8 until noon on the phones. Um, so that's a solid four hours of prospecting. If I don't have appointments in the afternoon, it's my job. I get back on the phone to find appointments. Occasionally I'll work an evening, uh, aside from Monday. And then on Saturday, I'll typically work two hours Saturday morning to follow up on who I didn't get to during the week. How, how's just, the two Saturdays a month. How's the response on Saturday mornings? Is it a positive reaction from the prospects, or is it like, "Hey, this is my Saturday morning. I'm care. I'm, I'm I'm asked that all the time. Love to. What do you get? I get really good response on Saturdays, um, really? and I'll I'll typically do like nine to eleven or ten to twelve. I won't <laughs> call it eight on Saturday. I don't want to wake people up. 
Uh, but if I haven't been able to reach them during the week, they're usually impressed that I'm diligent enough to follow through on the weekend. If people are working, traveling, uh, that's, a, that's a day that I leave that slot for the new expireds. And the other thing is you don't have as much competition on Saturday and Sunday for the new expireds. That's true. That's very nice. true because agents are allergic to the four-letter word called work. <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, Ew, that's my Saturday. I don't want to work Saturdays. No, but that's, that's really awesome. No wonder you're just crushing it down there. I mean, that Monday, Monday is ridiculous. I mean, do you, do you, I mean, do you go, you know, you don't go all the way through that. You take breaks every two hours, every three hours for 30 minutes or, I mean, something like that. Did, I mean, cause Five that's, or ten minute breaks every hour or two. Um, I'll go from eight until 12 pretty much steady the rest of the week. But on Mondays, I've got a half hour break uh, where I do the Mondays with Mike. And that's a call with a small group with Mike Ferry. And then I do what we call the Think Big Group call, and that's a half-hour call with Mike Ferry about uh, thinking bigger, expanding your thinking, uh, becoming more efficient, increasing your production, and having bigger goals, stretching. Hmm. Hmm. Absolutely. So, it's uh, very important. It is. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's, 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 like a, it's like a productive daydream, but it's not daydreaming. It's like goal setting, goal achieving, but it's you're doing it with a group of people that are stretching your, your comfort level, right? Exactly. And Mike always gives us such, uh, such thought-provoking questions that we spend the next week working on and then we reconvene and we go over uh, growing. It's just, it's really, and these are people that I mastermind with throughout the year. We role play every morning. I, I didn't mention, but I do start every morning with a really strong role play at 7.30 before I get on the phone today. That is amazing. Now, is it with you? Said it was with Mike Ferry for the role play as well. Uh, the role play is with other Mike Ferry agents. Every morning, I have a different agent uh, oh, that's that awesome. I role. That's yeah, so. I think that's, that's pretty big in the Mike Ferry culture, isn't it? If I am I not is. mistaken, the the role playing at seven thirty. Yes, 7.30, and then some people even do it again at, at lunchtime. I love that I've got these calls on Monday because they keep me so focused uh, on my goals and my dreams that the rest of the day is just its very powerful because I'm excited to get back on the phones and set some more appointments and achieve some more, some more goals. So quick question for you, if you wouldn't mind sharing. I know a lot of people, they're, 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 you know, they're very interested to kind of know what that thought-provoking question might look like. So they maybe, if, they're, if they haven't or, you know, been able to afford or whatnot, the Mike Ferry, you know, you know per product, what, is, what, is, what, is, what would one of those questions look like so that they could go start working on some of their own? In the Think Big group, you mean, or just yeah. in general? Yeah, uh, either one group. or both or whatever, yeah. Um, you know, it's... I would say in the Think Big group, what we discussed this week is what is stopping you from thinking big? What is stopping you from stretching and getting bigger? And it's interesting, when I joined the group, I thought, oh, this is great. I can think big. I'm a big thinker. Until you get in and you're affiliated with other big thinkers and you're exposed to the things that other people are really dreaming and doing. It's, you know, buying jets and... Um, you know, living differently, traveling differently, and, you know, today he broke it down to if there is a goal that you want that you really can't wrap your head around, sit down and think about the steps that it'll take to achieve it. You know, what's the first step? What's the second? What's the third? What's the fourth? And at that point, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not like the big elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. yeah, so it breaks it down into manageable steps. Yes, exactly. Yeah, it's not that big scary thing. Yeah. Yeah. So Susan, what is the what is the next step for you in terms of how you'd like to see your business grow or expand? That's a great question. Um, I always want more listings. I always want more repeat and referral business. Um, I'm working on the probate. I've always done estate sales, so I'm working on establishing relationships with some probate attorneys locally, uh, and doing more of the luxury real estate. I've, you know, I've I help people with just about anything, uh, and my market is broad. I love marketing and being very creative and going out and actually finding buyers, creating buyers, creative financing, thinking outside of the box, making it happen, and um, you know, keeping in touch with my past clients is so important. Uh, yeah, how do you uh, how do you do that on a regular basis? Do you, are you calling them? Are you inviting them to events, for example, anything like that that you can share? It's more calling and mailing and, and emailing and these viral video blogs with, uh, 
useful topics, things that people want to know, questions people are asking, they're talking about. Uh, I just did one on staging, people are questioning that. Um, I think we were talking about the, the Zestimate. People are asking yeah. questions about that. I just did another one today. Shall I wait until season or shall I put my house back on the market now is one timely question. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And, yeah, but, you know, and what, what did you mention about the season service. almost being over? I'm sorry? What, what did you mention earlier about the season almost being over? Well, at Easter, you know, and it's funny because people say, well, when is season over? Easter is early this year, so I don't want to think of season as being over yet. Uh, but there's no... There's no date on the calendar that signifies the end of season. Some people say it's the end of April. Some people say it's Easter. Some people, I say we go into 4th of July and we're still busy. However, the spring market brings a lot of buyers who have sold a home up north and are now able to buy down here. We've also got a lot of locals that need to buy off season because we're too busy during season. And again, we have people that have children that want to get in before the new school year. So mm -hmm. we are year-round more and more these days. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay. Cool. All right. Uh, yeah, so the, speaking of your blog, so there was something that caught my eye. Uh, so the, the most recent video that's published, obviously you just shot a couple of today, but the most recent one that was published was talking about the Zillow uh, Zestimate. And uh, it's funny because I just got off the line earlier with a guy named Todd Miller. Are you familiar with him? I'm not. No, where is he so from? He's, uh, he's out of Vegas. He at one point was the number one guy in uh, like the number one team in the world uh, in 2011. They were turning over a ton of REO properties, and uh, and he, a few years ago he was one of the first guys that really got on and started blogging like video blogging on real estate. So like eight or nine years ago he did a video similar to that where he called out Zillow on their estimate being way off. And he got into like a Twitter fight with somebody that's going back and forth with him for a half hour on how he was wrong and how like none of the points in the video were quite right and just kept coming back to him, coming back to him. So he finally clicks on this guy's profile and it was the CEO of Zillow. <laughs> so he got into a fight with Spencer Raskoff on Twitter after he <laughs> shot a video like this and had no idea it was him for like a half hour. Oh, that's hilarious. Well, Tom Ferry... Uh, just was talking about two agents that went out on a listing appointment and the owner of the home asked them, well, what do you think of Zillow? And they said, well, we like Zillow. It's not always, estim it, those estimates are not always accurate, but we get a lot of buyers. And it turns out that his son was the CEO of Zillow and he found <laughs> out other agents who didn't respond properly. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> That's great. That's funny. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. So, uh, well, let's go ahead and, uh, and get ready to send this baby home. So there's a couple of things I wanted to point out as far as resources for how people can learn more about you and, and the areas that you serve. So your website is uh, SusanHeller.com. Yes. And, uh, and then you have your, your video blog, which I mentioned is Susan-Heller-Blogspot.com. So make sure you get the dashes in there. But if somebody wanted to send a, a, a referral directly to you, for example, what's the best way for them to do that? Uh, you can call me at 239-248-8000 on my cell. My office is 239-280-0939. And you can also uh, email it, Susan, at SusanHeller.com. Perfect. All right. And then uh, any, any last words of advice for anybody? Obviously, you've been through the process of kind of reestablishing yourself in a new market. So if you were, if you were coming in, you had to do that over again. If you moved away from Naples and just went to another city, like how would you go about reestablishing yourself? I would pick up the phone. I would do a lot of Money Mondays and Money Tuesdays and Money Wednesdays. <laughs> <laughs> money every day. That's right. So when, when, when you're not on an appointment, when the default setting is on the phone. Absolutely. What else am I going to do? It's my job, right? If I don't have an appointment, I need to talk to someone else. Exactly. Are you using a triple line dialer or are you doing it oh. all with your fingers? Mojo. What? Okay. Yeah. I love Mojo. What are your what are you averaging on an hourly outbound? Depends on who I'm calling when I'm doing lead follow up, it slows down a little bit. I'm anywhere from 8 to 12 contacts an hour. Oof. That'll nice. work. That's brisk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That'll definitely work. That's good stuff. I love Mojo. So, you guys, you've uh, I've logged at least 85,000 phone calls in the last couple of years. Susan, I'm sure you're way past me. Um, and you know what? We've heard it from both of us at work, so stop being afraid of yourself and go out there and just make it happen. She's crushing it in Florida. You know, we're doing great out here in California. So, it, you can work for, you know, the Midwest too, Matt. Uh, yeah, I know. Thanks. <laughs> I'm aware. <laughs> 
and uh, and we cover all that if you're if you're curious and want to learn more about uh, like cold outbound prospecting how to use a triple line dollar so all that stuff is in the farming product that Greg mentioned earlier if you go to mcdanielrealestatesystems.com and click on the farming training video link up at the top uh, that'll give you all the details on that product and it's just 99 bucks so it's like 10 hours of training plus a bunch of stuff on Zillow and events and every other type of prospecting under the sun all within the framework of uh, of geo farming so really yeah. really good and we're going to need to add some uh, some more additions to it, Matt. We're going to, have to add on the the bonuses because now there's live video training and uh, you know and um, all that fun stuff that wasn't there. So we're we'll play around with it. Perfect. Maybe we'll save that for another product. product. You're another product. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well, with that, uh, once again, just a quick thank you to Viral Marketing. Uh, check them out at getviral.com. And, uh, and uh, oh, that's right, patreon.com slash reupodcast if you'd like to support the show and the lovely ladies that are behind the show and help make it possible. Greg, uh, make sure to follow him on mm -hmm. Facebook for all of his live videos because apparently he's doing that uh, every day now, yeah, uh, including a 33-minute marathon today. Yeah. I don't know what you were talking about. Everything awesome, of course. Okay. Okay. It's uh, it was 25 out of the 50 business marketing strategies that people should be putting into their business. Uh, I don't know, I don't do that's 33 minutes, and I got through 25 of them. So good lord, you know, uh, I'm probably not gonna do that long of videos every time, guys. But take it, come hang with me, come subscribe to my channel, come kick it with me. You'll have fun. We get to talk. This is not gonna be the same stuff you're gonna get on the show. Very much like the McDaniel challenge. If you haven't done it already, which I know you haven't because my phone hasn't rang this entire time, you lazy SOBs, pick up your fingers you know, and put them on your keypad and dial my phone number. Now, here it is. If you haven't woken up screaming, you know, reciting my number yet, we'll give it to you one more time. It's 925. <laughs> Matt's like, I have. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's 925-915-1978. Again, 925-915-1978. Do yourself a great favor. Get free coaching you know, and training and strategy and everything else. Kick it with me. Become my friend, and let's move you forward at a very fast pace. As of this recording, April 28th is the last recording in April. Then we move into May, people. This shit is getting crazy, so please uh, get out of the way and call me, okay. and I will look forward to talking to you. Yep, and uh, if you'd like to learn more of the scripts that Susan uses and has used for years that have made her very successful, uh, all that stuff is actually available on Mike Ferry's website for free. There's like a free resources section that has all of those scripts. You can download them uh, them all, so that's really, really incredibly valuable. Make sure to yeah, check that out. Yeah, that's huge. That's cool. really good stuff. All right, guys. Well, that's going to do it. Uh, we do not have an episode on Wednesday, so I will be in the air. Um, I have a speaking engagement with Jeff Cohn in Canada uh, Thursday. And so then I'll be traveling back on Friday. Greg is going to be hosting the show solo with Justin Woodall. And so we will uh, we will see you guys back then, or at least Greg will. So I, until then, I'm thank you so much, guys. I'm sure Matt's going to be sweating bullets going, he's running the show, he's running the show, he's running the show. He's not going to care, care if the plane's going to crash. He's going to care if I'm running the show correctly is what he's going to be worried about. Yeah, but I you guys, so. we're going to have fun, guys. I love you. We do it for you. We will see you soon. All right. Thanks, guys.